Hi guys, welcome to another Image Occlusion Enhanced tutorial video. This one will cover some of the advanced features in the Masks Editor which I wasn't able to showcase before. Some of these features are actually stuff that I've just discovered myself, so I'm pretty happy to be able to share this with you. So the first thing I wanted to showcase is how to use grid snapping in order to align shapes to a symmetrical grid along the canvas. You can enable the um, grid snapping mode by using the button up here but you can also use the hotkey which is shift plus s which will toggle between grid snapping and non-grid snapping mode. So when, when this mode is active the difference is that now any shapes you draw will actually be aligned to a grid on the canvas. So instead of freely resizing the image um, shapes like you would normally do you are restrained by a canvas and the advantage of this is that you can actually align shapes much easier next to each other or below each other. So if you're a stickler for uh, symmetric shapes and positioning them in a neat and tidy way then this is um, a pretty useful tool I think. Alright, the second thing I wanted to showcase is how to edit existing groups. Now if you've watched my previous videos, especially the one on editing, you will know that um, keeping a group intact is pretty important because a group corresponds to a specific card and if you edit that group or dissolve it then that specific group um, then that specific card would actually be deleted when editing that node. So there's also a way how you can edit a group without having to dissolve it and it's pretty it's very easy to use actually you just have to double click on an existing group and that will switch the editor to an in-group editing mode and in this mode any changes you perform will only be applied to that specific group. So for instance if I now draw an additional shape then then switch back to the regular mode by clicking on the uh, labels button for instance you will see that all of these shapes are now part of the same group. And what's also interesting is that if you have a shape outside of the group and then switch into group editing mode then those um, those shapes will automatically be blended out. So you know that the only thing you can actually edit in this mode is the group itself. And aside from adding, adding new shapes, you can also edit the existing shapes, you can resize them and do anything else you want to do with them, like um, change the color, etc. And by switching back to the regular mode, you see that all of these changes only apply to the group, and the group is preserved as it was before but with your changes applied, which is pretty neat for editing existing shapes and existing groups. Okay, now the next thing I wanted to show you is something more advanced and uh, something you should probably only use when you, if you know what you're doing, but it can be pretty useful. So I want to showcase how this works and why this could be useful. So for instance, let's say you're drawing up some labels on this image, like um, this one right here, and you want to edit them. So normally you could just double click on that label and just insert some text. But if this is a longer label or if you have multiple labels on your um, compute, on your uh, image, then this can be tiresome. So the alternative to this is to go into the actual source code of the SVG mask file. And you can go in there by just clicking on the SVG button up here. Now this right here will show you exactly how the SVG code looks. So this pretty much is how the masks layer is coded. It's just an array of text which codes for different shapes, different colored shapes, different geometrical areas, etc. And what you can do then is you can just copy this text and insert it into a text editor like this one and just perform any changes you want in this pretty much. If you know how SVG works, you can change the shapes, change the colors, etc. You can just um, do mass edits by, for instance, by changing the color of all of these different entries. It works pretty much in the same way as as, um, as HTML, if you know how to code a web page. That's pretty much how SVG files work, so as well as the same time of markup format. But what I wanted to show specifically is how you can now edit a label. For this you will just have to find the text tag, like this one, and in there you will see First of all, you will see a lot of attributes that actually uh, govern how the text will be displayed, like the font size, etc., the font family. And then inside these tags, then, is the actual text. And you can now perform any edits you want to this, like, uh, yeah, let's do anything like this one, like this, for instance. And um, 
if you now copy this this passage back into the SVG window here and then apply changes, you will see that your uh, masks now feature that updated label. So this is an advanced way of how you can edit the mask file, how you can batch edit a lot of labels, a lot of different shapes at once by just going into the source code of the mask file itself and editing all of that. Okay, so that's as far as that's concerned. One last thing I wanted to show is pretty much, it's probably not a very useful feature, but still pretty neat to just uh, know how, what it does really. And that's the image tool right here. Now, if you use this tool, you will see, first of all, the important thing about this to know is that anytime you click on an image, when on the image, when this tool is active, it will draw up a dialog like this, where you can insert a link to an external image, which will be, which be then inserted into the uh, image you have in the editor. Now, this image will not actually be st stored locally on your PC, but rather be stored as a reference. So when you're reviewing these cards, you will only be able to see this image when you're actually connected to the internet. Now, you can argue if that's useful or not, but it's still part of the editor, so I wanted to showcase this and explain what it does. And as soon as, you s as you've selected the image, you can then click uh, again and again on the, um, on the canvas to just insert more references to that image. As I've said, I'm not really sure how this is actually useful, but still, as it's part of the uh, tool uh, side panel here, and you might click on it, maybe by accident, I thought it was important to just showcase what, it, this, what this actually does and how it works. Okay, so I think that's as far as the, um, of, as far as the features are concerned I wanted to showcase. I think we've, we've pretty much covered most of what um, SVG edit, or rather what the masks editor is capable of, so I'm pretty happy we've reached that point. I hope you found these uh, videos useful. I'll see if I can find some new stuff to showcase in one of the next videos. Until then, thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye.